Good day, everybody. I appreciate your attendance to this presentation. My name is Lorena de la Torre. I am from Mexico, and I'll be presenting the paper that Roman Rodriguez and I have developed. The name of the article is An Asset Index Proposal for Households in Mexico, Applying the Mixed Principal Components Analysis Methodology. This presentation will start with an introduction of the main concepts of social mobility and asset indices, the description of the method used in every step, the results obtained, and finally, the conclusions reached. The development of the asset index that is presented here is part of a broader analysis of the social mobility in a country or in a particular region. Social mobility can be defined as the changes experienced by individuals in their socioeconomic condition, reflected in a variation in the relative position according to an educational, employment, or income indicator. A society that favors social mobility allows individuals to improve their living status on their own merits and are not predetermined by their conditions of origin. The analysis of social mobility is framed in the study of inequality, more precisely in the study of inequality of opportunities. In 2020, the World Economic Forum presented the first edition of the Global Social Mobility Index based on 10 pillars health, education access, education quality and equity, lifelong learning, social protection, technology access, work opportunities, fair wages, working condition, efficient and inclusive institutions. 82 countries were evaluated on 51 indicators based on these pillars, and Mexico was ranked number 58. In the results report, it is estimated that an increase of 10 points in the index could translate into an additional growth in GDP of 4.41 percent by 2030. Hence, the importance for countries to identify and invest in the right mix of factors determinants of social mobility. The measurement of social mobility from an economic perspective has used as the main variable the level of income from wages and salaries. However, there are studies that propose an alternative estimate based on the wealth of families under the assumption that the accumulation of assets constitutes a better approximation to household wealth and considering the limitation of the need to have information on the income of different generations, which is not always available in all countries or regions. Particularly in developing countries, the use of asset indices has increased in studies related to poverty and inequality since these indicators present fewer measurement problems or resistance from interviews to provide the information. In Mexico, studies that have developed asset indices have used data from the available specialized social mobility surveys. However, the National Household Income and Expenditure Surveys, Encuesta Nacional de Ingreso y Gasto de los Hogares, ENIG by its acronym in Spanish, provides robust information on the profile and living conditions of households in Mexico, and this information has not been used for the development of asset indices before. Moreover, the calculated indices have used methods focused ex exclusively on numerical or categorical variables, but no asset index has been developed by combining both. The models of Filmer, Pritchett, and San Stevel are the most cited. The former developed an index on household assets and characteristics based on the principal component analysis methodology, PZA. The value of the first principal component is the latent variable that represents the possession of household assets. On the other hand, San Stevel used the factor analysis to estimate a single common factor that explains the variances in the possession of a set of assets, and this factor is considered as a metric of economic status or well-being. In Mexico, there are studies where asset indices are calculated primarily using principal components analysis, and a few studies, studies use the multiple correspondence analysis, considering that it presents a better interpretation when the variables are categorical. These methods are also found in other regions such as Bangladesh, Colombia, or Pakistan. However, there are no studies detected that have built an asset index using a mixed principal components methodology combining numerical and categorical variables. Derived from this, the present study aims to develop an asset index representing the households in Mexico with the information from ENIC 2018, 
The selection of the assets that will be part of the index takes as a reference the pillars conforming the Global Social Mobility Index and the mixed principal components method is applied. Additionally, the asset index will be used to rank households in Mexico and compare it with the Gini coefficient. Now, the mixed principal components analysis applied here uses the generalized singular value decomposition methodology. For this, we use the PZA mix package from R. It is necessary to have a real matrix Z formed by the matrix Z1 that is the standard version of the quantitative matrix and Z2 that is the standard version of the indicator matrix G of the qualitative matrix. The matrix Z is then decomposed in three matrices. U and V transpose are the aging vectors matrices and lambda that is a diagonal matrix of the singular values. After the generalized single value decomposition method, the PZA mix produces a matrix of dimension P1 plus M times R of the factor coordinates of the P1 quantitative variables and the M levels of the P2 categorical variables. Along with the aging values for each dimension, it is also obtained the proportion of the total inertia contributed by each one. In addition, in this study, we use the Gini coefficient as a measure of concentration of the assets among households. The Gini coefficient is a common measure of inequality, typically evaluating the degree of distribution of income or wealth among individuals or households. Its value range from zero, which is a perfectly equitable distribution, to one, where a single, single individual or household concentrates wealth. In this study, however, the concentration of the income is not measured, but the degree of concentration of the asset index. Now, the process of the estimation of the index is as follows. The information was taken from the National Household Income and Expenditure Survey carried out in 2018. The size of this national coverage sample was about 87,000 households, representing 125 million inhabitants from Mexico. The monetary variables were deflated. The selection of the assets was based on seven of the 10 pillars of the Global Social Mobility Index, including qualitative variables representing the ownership of different types of assets and quantitative variables according to average monthly expenses or income from certain activities. Additionally, other financial inclusion and household assets ownership variables were included. It was necessary to transform some of them from multi-level to binary. In total, 49 variables were selected. Here is a list of the variables that we used. The PCA mix package from R was used and the dimensions and agent values are obtained. The number of dimensions to keep is determined based on the proportion of total inertial accumulated. The index is calculated as the weighted average of the factor coordinates value, values of these dimensions weighted by the proportion of total inertia explained. Finally, the value of the index is adjusted to a range between 0 and 100 to facilitate its interpretation. Using the index created, the density distribution is estimated for the national index and then disaggregated by urban and rural condition and also by state. Additionally, the Gini coefficient is estimated and finally, to profile the Mexican households, a K-means clustering segmentation method was used. Passing now to the results, a total of 71 dimensions were obtained from the PZA mix process. 39 were selected, accumulating a total of 70.62% of proportion of the inertia explained. It is worth to mention that even though there is a loss of 29.39% of the total variance explained, this limitation is lessened by the fact that each of the dimensions maintained contains information on the total 49 variables selected. 
in the density distribution of the asset index at the national level, it is clear a high degree of inequality. Only 0.01% of the households possess 40% of or more of the assets included in the index. The same shape is found in the density distribution of the asset index when it was disaggregated for urban and rural condition or when estimated for the mean for each state, although some states present higher concentration of assets than others. Now, in terms of the relevance that the variables selected have on the index, the loadings are estimated, which represent the contribution of each variable to each one of the, co of the components or dimensions. The first dimension is mostly influenced by assets related to technology, like computer or internet access, and by the level of education of the household health. The second dimension presents a higher contribution from variables related to house ownership. Now, an important remark is that the variables that have a major relevance are both categorical and numerical. Taken as an example, the first dimensions that are shown in this slide, the monthly expenses on education and communications present important contributions. Had the standard principal components or more multiple correspondence method been used, the impact of these variables would not have been considered because of its numerical variable or numerical nature that is not categorical as most of the other variables are. Analyzing the results of the Gini coefficient compared to the median of the asset in the index per state, it can be observed that the behavior is mostly inverse. Special attention must be taken to those states with the lowest level of assets possession that at the same time show high level of concentrations because this inequality in the distribution of the assets may represent an obstacle for social mobility. The Gini coefficient for rural household is 0 0.24 and for ur urban household is 0 0.25. So urban households own more assets than rural households, but at the same time, there are more concentrated, that is, a less, a less equitable distribution. The partitions of groups of Mexican states using the K-mean clustering method was based on the average asset index per state. Three clustering calculations were performed with 10, 5, and 3 clusters. And there was a drop in the intragroup sum of squares after every reduction in the number of clusters, which is the reason why a three-segment clustering was defined. Now, four states belong to the group with the lowest level of asset accumulation, 16 states are in the medium range group, and 12 states belong to the highest level group. Cluster number one corresponds to the lower level, Cluster number two is the higher level, and cluster number three are the states with a medium level of asset index. When we represent these clusters in the map, it is clear the difference in the regions. The nor northern and western states, as well as Ciudad de Mexico or Mexico City, which is at the center, belong to the group with the highest asset accumulation levels. The states located at the center and the Yucatan Peninsula form the middle range group, and the southern states of Oaxaca, Guerrero, Chiapas, and Veracruz are the region where households own less assets. Now, the conclusions that are obtained are as follows. Mixed principal components analysis allows the use of different types of variables, binary, categorical, multi-level, and numerical. This variety broadens the, ran the range of information that can be included in the index. The methodology used here allows the inclusion of the simultaneous effect of the possession of a given asset, such as education, for example, and the magnitude of the investment made by the household on that asset, measured by the amount of the monthly expenses on that particular type of activity. Even though one of the main purposes of the method is the reduction of dimensions, each one of the dimensions selected for the integration of the index contain information of all the variables, lessening the negative effect of the loss of dimensions. The weights assigned to every dimension and to every variable are not arbitrary. 
The dimensions are weighted by the proportion of the total inertia that each dimension explains. And in addition, every dimension contains information of all variables using proportions de derived from the correlations between the variables and the dimension. Now, when we use the index to analyze the Mexican situation, the outcomes show a clear segmentation of the Mexican states, northern and western, as, long, as well as Mexico City in one group, the center states and the Yucatan Peninsula in the medium level, and the southern states where the asset accumulation is at the lowest. The Gini coefficient was useful to prove that re regions where asset possession is lower tend to present greater levels of inequality in its distribution. Southern states that are the states where challenges for ascending social mobility are higher due to less availability of assets and a greater level of inequality. These results are in line with other studies using wealth indices to measure inequality in different regions of Mexico, which shows the adequacy of the mixed principal components analysis-based index in profiling the socioeconomic condition. The methodology used in the present study is not restricted to the Mexican region. It can be useful in the development of asset indices in other countries where information of asset ownership, income, and expenses at the household level is available. And further analysis may use the asset index to measure intergenerational intergeneration, social mobility, overcoming the lack of sufficient income information from different generations. Other applications of this index may use it in the identification of the assets with highest impacts on social mobility and the probabilities of households to grow in their living conditions by possessing those assets. Thank you very, very much for your attention and I leave here my email where you can reach me if you have any comments or questions about this presentation.